<laughs> Julie, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so with Wish, I, I don't want to just jump to the end, but you do have one of my favorite moments because I do love, <laughs> I love when the queen kind of, you know, reclaims her time and energy in Rojas. And I think it's very like indicative of the movie as a whole. And for you, what was the fun of getting to kind of play that role that gets to do both sides of the spectrum of a movie like Wish? Um, well, it was an, uh, you know, it's quite an honor to have a character, like a female character. I think they wrote her really well because she has such an arc. And I think that can be rare in some previous Disney movies. I think for the queen, she's, a, she's to me as a modern woman who speaks her mind and isn't afraid of, uh, her man. And, uh, it was awesome. Like it, it just felt right. I felt um, this isn't how she was written originally when I auditioned like almost two years ago now. So seeing how she ended up and how they they wrote her and how it all kind of came together was such a joy. And I'm so proud of it, honestly. Like this is a kind of movie that I want. Like I've been a part of a lot of different projects, a lot. I've been around for a while, like acting on TV and doing different things. And this is like the first time where I'm like so excited for literally everyone to see this movie because it's because I'm my character. I love her so much. I think she's so awesome. I'm just so proud of Queen Amaya. Yeah. And it, it is. I mean, I was very excited to have King Chris Pine because I'm a big Chris Pine fan. So anytime he oh, yeah. gets thing. I was very happy, but I do like that this movie kind of, there's a lot of balance to it and it is not just your typical, like, here's the villain, here's his arc and here's right. that every character kind of has their own journey. And you said it changed a lot. Did you get to have any input into um, this character as the queen and kind of where you wanted to see when you got to finally join? I mean, no, I wouldn't say I had input. I think they, the creative team had made that decision. Like by the time I was in my callback, the sides were already different. Her, her character was already different. So that was, I think a very early idea that she was going to be the evil queen mm -hmm. and he was going to be the good King. And they, they basically just switched that. And then in the recording, in our sessions, I think that my person who I am and who I bring in informs the character. So I think like just from my own conversation with the writers and Chris and Fawn, I think even in my ad libs and in the playing around in the studio, I think all of that informs the character. So I think I wouldn't say like I got to tell them what I thought, but it's more like I think once I was set and I would bring each each recording session something, I would bring this or I'd bring this. I think that just informs the character. Yeah, and I do think the ad libbing part is always so fascinating to me because for the most part, you guys are doing this completely on your own. So when you're right. doing improv, like improv on just like your lines, because you're not responding to anybody else, how does that kind of work for you? Like, how does it work in the like final process? Like how much of it got made in and like, what is that? Dynamic? You know, <laughs> to be totally, I mean, first of all, it's so fun. Like that part is like so fun, but to be totally honest with you, you do so much in the four hours. There are about four hours, these sessions that you record. We do so much and so many that I don't even like remember exactly what made it in. Like, I'm like, when I see it, I'm like, hmm, I can't remember. Like, was that an ad? Like, I think most of it is written, but like, I, I'm sure some of it has seeped in or they've like morphed some of it. But I, you know, I think that I can't even remember <laughs> like the amount because you talk a lot, you do a lot of takes. Well, and too, I, I always think it's just so funny because then it's like, I love when then they pair us with like the celebrities who did the vocal performances together because I'm always just like, they're just meeting. And I'm like- Yeah, I haven't met Chris. I still haven't met Chris. Isn't that wild? Yeah, well, so like, him. how did you get to do- Oh no, like, did you get to go to the premiere at all? And see? no, we didn't, we were still, the premiere was, I think it was like November 8th. Yeah. And we, it was the remember. day that the SAG, I remember waiting by the phone, like, <laughs> am I going to get to go? Like, are we going to get to go? And like, we thought it was going to be the sixth or the seventh. And then it wasn't. And then the eighth came and they made the deal mm -hmm. at like 4.30 or something. And the premiere was at seven and you have to wait a 24 hour Mm -hmm. something before you're allowed to like do any kind of promotion still. So like 
we just missed it. But then what was so cool is that then we could do some other press. Like I got, I've gotten to do some press and I've gotten to a couple of events with Ariana and Alan and that's lovely. So I've gotten to meet them, but the whole cast together promoting the film has not happened yet. So now, now it has happened because otherwise. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> it's not happened. I know. I know. My birthday's coming up and I was like toying with, I'm like, should I just like have a big party for the wish cast and like see who comes? <laughs> Like, everyone come we need to have a cast picture <laughs> we finally be together so then we can say hey guys we did that that's uh, right with a movie like which it does join like the disney catalog of kind of the you know i, I don't know what this new era is called because i know i was part of the renaissance as a kid with like the lion king and all that but yeah. this the newer era of like the disney princesses and them instantly being brought into the park which i'm obsessed with because i do love that that gets added what has been your favorite part of that aspect like getting to see wish come to life in like the di different disney parks and right everything so quickly i mean to me it's just mind-blowing like i saw merch for wish before in like september mm -hmm. or like august september before like we were still on strike i couldn't talk about it i couldn't even announce like my announcement that i was attached it came out like I know a year into my recording and like, I couldn't even talk about that. Like it came out in September. Like it's mind blowing how Disney permeates like everything and everyone. And I think, I think I was shy. I think my first thing was like, Oh my God, I can't believe how the merch is already out. That was like the first thing. This is wild. I saw queen Amaya doll before I saw the movie. Okay. I didn't even see the movie until November 22nd or whatever, 21st. So that's the first thing. The second thing is my phone is every day blowing up mm -hmm. with people listening to the songs, going to the theaters, sending me selfies with their Amayas. Like Disney just, again, it permeates like everyone and every culture and every demographic. So like my friends from all walks of life, all throughout my life are seeing this movie and their children are loving the movie. And I think that's what's so different because I'm used to TV shows where not everyone sees it because if you don't have Hulu or you don't have whatever, like you're not streaming it, right? Yeah. So this is just very different than that. And it is, it's exciting though. Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> I'm excited for uh, people to get to see this because I know like a lot of people didn't go at the theaters at the time and everything. And so I'm excited that more people are going to get to see Wish. So I do think it is a really fun addition to the Disney canon. And what do you, you what do you hope um, they take away when they get to see it now when it's coming out on the home release? I mean, listen, I hope that Wish becomes like how Frozen is in our household, which is it's just like, it'll be on kind of all the time. <laughs> like my kids just turn it on because they like, it's like comfortable to them. And it's like, there's a, there's a feeling of familiarity. So I hope that Wish is like the movie that you turn on to feel cozy, to feel uplifted, to feel hopeful. And it's like a family favorite that both mom and dad will think it's great right because there's like funny bits with Alan and there's like comedy there I think that the family can the parents can appreciate it but then the kids like love Asha and they love hopefully the queen and I know they love the queen because my friends were telling me that but like it's just like fun and easy I think it's like an easy palatable movie and I don't think you have to think listen I don't think you there's there have been Disney movies that I think are like more of like oh I have to understand this or like and I love all those also but I think that this is a little more palatable. I just think it's like an easy Disney classic. Yeah, I can't wait for more people to get to see it. And thank you so much for talking with me today. I really- Oh, you're welcome. Nice to meet you. Okay, nice to meet you. bye. bye.